Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TCEPs and Fast Films. I'd like to run a simple index color routine for you right now. We're going to click on Run Index Color, and this will have an index base, meaning that the underbase will be all square pixels, and we can't do any adjustment to it when we're done. I'm going to click on Run Index Color Index Base. There's a lot more help screens in this routine. This routine requires more user input because you're going to pick your own colors for this routine. And so there's a lot of help screens. You need to read them as they come up. Don't just blow by them. As with other routines, you're going to load the black or the masked version first and load the white or the unmasked version second. For this simple design, I'm going to run a design that's going to run only, uh, going to print only on light shirts, and there'll be no underbase. The routine will make the underbase and highlight, but we'll discard them. And I'm going to show you how indexing works on simple pieces of art. This piece of artwork could have been created in Corel Draw, our Illustrator, and this is really a spot color image. But indexing works on very simple artwork and complex art. Now, as with other routines, it analyzes the image. It's going to try and make an underbase, although we didn't give a, a version of the artwork that had black around it, because this is only going to be for a light shirt with no underbase. Now, this is where you must read the screens. The support calls we get on the indexing are always because somebody blew by one of these menus, and we can walk them through it on the phone, and we always find that they missed something. This is when prompted, verify that the input and output resolutions are the same and that the fusion dither is checked. This is here because Photoshop likes to change things around, and maybe you were creating a piece of artwork outside of, of uh, TCEPs, and you changed the output resolutions, and so Photoshop remembers the last change you did. Let's press Continue, and the input resolution on this design is 150 dpi. This is not a real high-end design, 150 dpi for the resolution. It must match here, and this must say Diffusion Dither. If not, change these. You'll get the same window one more time. Again, you must verify the resolutions match and that it says Diffusion Dither. Now, these are the screens you really need to read. This says that the routine will build your custom color table based on specific colors in your design. Make sure to use a custom palette with Diffusion Dither and have the amount set to 100% and have Preview Unchecked. Unchecked is capitalized because this is important to, to read this and understand this. We're going to click on Continue. If your design has a lot of solid spot colors, yes it does, check preserve exact colors, continue. And it says to create a custom color table, make sure the entire color table is blank. And I'll show you what that means here in a second. And it's going to tell you what to do, but we'll walk through it right now. So it brings up the index color table. Now, you need to always move this out of the way because you need to see your design. Once you start picking colors, this window doesn't move. And if your window is here and you continue on, you can't get to your whole design. So move this out of the way. The help screens were very specific to have preview unchecked. The reason for that is the last job you did, if you've ever indexed before, well, Photoshop thinks that's the color table you want to use. I'm going to click on check on preview. I haven't done anything on this computer for a while, but it might give you wrong colors here. Make sure preview is unchecked. Now, we're going to check preserve exact colors because this has a lot of spot color in it, obviously. We'll set the amount for 100%. It's said in the help screens, make sure that it's set for diffusion dither. And it's said to drop this window down and click on custom. Now, sometimes in, in Photoshop, the forced menu may be visible and it may have something else in here. It should be set for forced to none. We're going to drop this down and click on custom. If you have any of the other selections set here and you work with these, you'll get errors. It must be set for custom. Now this brings up what's called the color table. Notice this index table will not move now. Brings up the color table. Now this was the last job I did. Your color table may be full of 256 colors. It may be full of colors. This is the last job I indexed. So this will bring up a color table that has nothing to do with this design. It may appear that it does, but it has nothing to do with this design. You want to make this entire color table blank, no colors. The way to do that is click in the lower right hand corner and drag the mouse all the way up and let go. That brings up Color Picker, and just drive the mouse off the end. Pick Dead White. Dead White is 255 levels of RGB, and say OK. 
and it will ask you to do it again. Say OK. We now have a blank table. We have a blank palette, no colors. Now we click on the very first square, move it out of the way a little bit, and we will sample from our design a color. And we say OK. And we have to determine how many colors we want to print. Let's say I want to print uh, four or five colors. I'll click on the next square and I'll sample from the image. Put the cursor over the image and click. Click on the next square and I'll sample the red. Now this is where it's a judgment call. There's a darker red here and a darker blue. To match the image exactly I need to pick these colors. But if I don't pick them Photoshop will try and make them by taking one of the colors I do pick. It might take some flesh and add it up there. It might take some blue and put it with the red. It's your call. If you want it to be a four color design, then click on the next square and pick on black. And say that's it until Photoshop. Do what you can with this because TSEPs will separate it, but Photoshop is going to take these four colors and make the whole thing work. And we say OK. And we say OK again. And now TSEPS goes to work and converts to color separations. Now, remember, we didn't give it a black masked version, so the highlight and the underbase will look incorrect. That's because it wasn't a masked version. We will delete these channels, click and drag, and drop them to the trash bin. What we have left is the four channels, and they're called spot colors because depending on how many colors you pick you may have to come back and then rename these so let's look at them one at a time there's spot color one that's obviously for the flesh spot color two which is for the red and you can see it tried to make the red darker by putting some red and it's going to put some blue pixels there that's the blue and that's the black outline. Now depending on the quality of your design, you can see with the spot color for the flesh, it picked up around the edge. This was not a very high quality design and I actually upsampled this design and I've used it on and off for years and so it had a lot of little ringing around it. You may have to come back and erase these pixels. Remember you can erase pixels in index separations but you can't do anything else. You can't take a tone curve and make any of these darker. Now let's change the shirt color obviously to a white shirt and there's our separation we're looking at the actual seps not the original artwork so you can see that index color works really well for simple designs and for complex designs now we could come back and we could double click on this that's the actual color and we could actually type in flesh if we want to we can actually click on the color that brings up the color picker we can go to our color library and it will find the nearest Pantone match and we can say OK and it puts the Pantone number in place. Now don't worry about solidity. This is how the inks print. It has nothing to do with how we display the image. So this is how the inks print on a shirt. and We want to leave them here because this has been measured to give us a good accurate monitor display. So we double click again on the channel. Click on color. Click on color libraries find the nearest Pantone match. It doesn't do a very good job on some colors. Like here it found an orange when it really should be more of a red. I'm going to change that because that is just not close enough for me. It doesn't like that red. I may have to leave it and change it at press. Say OK. Double click. Click on the color. Click on color libraries. The blue isn't bad. The Pantone colors will definitely be a little duller sometimes. And that is how we run a simple separation using index color. Now, the next step is outputting the films. And we click on outputting index color. Remember, this design is done. The pixels are already set. There's no halftone line town to set. In fact, we could print these separations directly to a laser printer or an inkjet printer with no rip required because these are already pre-separated and pre-turned into little pixels. But we click on outputting this color and it tells us right here that we don't have to worry about a rip and it gives us the help screens. There's no halftone line count unless we ran the halftone underbase. And we pretty much select a channel and say print. That's a simple index color routine.